So every manifestation is an instant manifestation. Because in fact, as some of you who have come here more often know from my teachings, is that you're actually consciousness shifting through different slides, different configurations of the universe. You are not literally creating or manifesting anything physically, structurally speaking. It's not possible. Because from the point of view of consciousness, the absolute consciousness, shall we say, there is no time. Imagine that for a moment. There not being any time. There not being any time. There is no time. If there is the absence of time, then everything that can exist already has to exist. You can't create anything new. It all exists. 20,000 billion years from now is already here. Any alternate reality configuration of what we would call, from our position here in this universe, 20,000 billion years from now, exists right here, right now. It has to because there's no time, and everything that can exist does exist. So it already exists. Where does it exist? Inside your consciousness. How amazing. Infinite creations exist in one central meeting point, and that meeting point is consciousness, the free agent, awareness. You. And you, as your I am individuation, are pouring a portion of yourself out into a particular linear, seemingly linear reality. And so your consciousness moves through a particular understandable, logical sequence of parallel universes all the time. Every second you're doing this millions, billions of times. So fluently, so fluidly that you don't have any idea that half of the time you don't exist. Every other nanosecond, nothing is here. And then every other nanosecond, there's another frame, another configuration of energy, another configuration of creation showing up inside your consciousness. Now, if you do this a billion times every second, like a light switch flickering on and off a million times or a billion times per second, how would you know? But once you get this, it starts to make sense because movement, you start to instinctively know that movement is an impossibility. Change is not possible, structurally speaking. Change is not a possibility. Something that is cannot become something else. It's impossible, very logical. Maybe not yet, but at some point. It will be very logical that something that is cannot become something else. It's impossible. A frame will always be that frame, and every parallel reality is in a timeless stasis. It already existed before you had any awareness of your sense of self. And it will always exist 20,000 billion years from now. It will still exist. Every reality you've ever experienced and every reality you will ever choose to experience because it's relevant for you to experience that reality already exists right here, right now, parallel to each other inside of the I am here now consciousness, which you share in, which you are ultimately. Something that is cannot change. Yet we experience change. We experience movement. How is that possible if something can change? It's because we're not actually changing what is. We're shifting through an alternate configuration of what seems to be here, which implies that every nanosecond you have a 100% completely different body, and there's a 100% completely different sun, and there's a 100% completely different Milky Way galaxy that you're conscious of. Like a projector light shining through the pictures that together form a motion picture. It's not a movie, it's pictures in motion, although the pictures themselves are not in motion, but it generates the illusion of motion through pictures. Picture, 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 picture. Right now you have a 100% different body. That's the only way you can change. You can't grow your hair. It's not possible. You can only shift to a body that has a different configuration of the length of its hair. Like I said, your unconscious is hyperconscious, it's superconscious, because that's what's taking care of all this. So you might be wondering, shit, I'm pretty intelligent. For me to move through all these alternate parallel realities, and while I'm focused on my relationship with something or to something in this world, seemingly lost in the sense of separation and illusion and circumstances seeming real, simultaneously, I manage that every billionth of a second, I'm moving into a parallel configuration of this universe where my body has a slightly longer structure of hair. That's pretty amazing. 
And that's just one aspect of the things that you constantly regulate. So what we call the unconscious is really superconscious. Does that make sense? And this is what is, or we could simply sort of generally call it the higher self or higher consciousness. And it is what is generating our reality in the way that we are generating our reality. It is what is regulating our agreements. It is what is deciding what is next and what is next and what is next so that you from your lower self point of consciousness can actually be the participant in your own creation. Seemingly separate, but not really. Seemingly the receiver, but still actually the giver to itself so that it can then focus only on the play inside of the stage and it doesn't need to worry about the stage itself. The stage is set. You can change the stage, but the stage is taken care of for you. Gravity is here. It's all regulated. The way your hair grows, etc. The earth orbiting, shifting through all these parallel realities that then seem to form a linear causal reality is all taken care of for you and it's providing you with the stage you need to play out your individual theme so that you can learn, so that you can express yourself from a very limited point of view. But the expansion you gain from meeting from a limited point of view is massive. In a way, we could almost say that the more consciousness limits itself from its lower self point of view, the more it seemingly becomes this individual in a play, even though from a higher point of view it's regulating the very universe that it exists in every billionth of a second. From this point of view, the learning that is extracted adds to the expansion of that soul consciousness, the I am consciousness, that is at the core of your individuation. We could call it soul. So if you wish to accelerate the manifestation or the attraction of an amazing life, you need to be in a state of changelessness, uh, sorry, changeability. You have to be able to wander within your own state of being. You have to be able to not tie how you feel to what shows up. It's very difficult for many people, very challenging. Yes. If you wish to accelerate the attraction of an amazing life within your movie, within your creation, which is all up to you, you deserve everything you desire because it's your creation, it's your theme, it's up to you. You have to be willing and able and conscious enough to not tie how you feel about yourself and about life to what is. What is should no longer dictate how you feel. What appears now should no longer be an indication of who you are. If you can detach your state of being from your circumstances, then your circumstances will continue to reflect you and before you know it, you start to understand that you're not separate from your experience, you're not separate from your circumstances, but all they do is reflect you, never the other way around. They move through you, never the other way around.